The night was moonless, and the darkness seemed to devour everything in its path as Mark embarked on a perilous journey down the infamous shadowed highway. This remote and desolate road had earned a chilling reputation over the years for its eerie occurrences and ghostly sightings. Mark, however, was a skeptic dismissing such superstitions as mere tales. As he maneuvered his car down the winding road, his headlights cut through the inky blackness, revealing a twisted canopy of trees on either side. Their branches clawed at the night air like skeletal fingers casting eerie shadows on the pavement. Mark's car radio, once playing his favorite tunes, now emitted nothing but static, gradually drowning out the music that had brought him solace. A shiver ran down Mark's spine, and an unshakable feeling of being watched settled in the pit of his stomach. He pushed aside his unease, blaming it on the isolation and darkness. He couldn't help but wonder why he was the only soul on this forsaken road tonight. Then, the inexplicable happened. As Mark's car rounded a bend, a shadowy figure materialized in the middle of the highway. Panic surged through him, and he slammed on the brakes, his heart pounding in his chest. Just inches from a catastrophic collision, his car came to a screeching halt, and he sat there, trembling. Before him stood a woman, her appearance unsettling. Her clothes were tattered and caked in mud, and her disheveled hair hung like a curtain, obscuring most of her face. She looked like a lost soul in desperate need of help. Summoning courage, Mark cautiously rolled down his window and asked, Are you okay? Do you need a ride? The woman's eyes, hollow and devoid of life, bore into his soul as she responded in a whisper that sent shivers down his spine. You shouldn't have stopped. Mark's blood ran cold as the woman's face twisted into a grotesque, ghostly visage. In an instant, her skeletal hand shot through the window, clutching his throat with a supernatural strength. Gasping for breath, Mark felt an otherworldly force choking the life out of him. As he teetered on the edge of consciousness, his headlights revealed a chilling sight. The forest surrounding him came alive with spectral figures, all converging on his immobilized car. It was as if the very darkness of Shadowed Highway had manifested to claim him. The next morning, a passerby discovered Mark's lifeless body in his car, abandoned on the side of the road. Despite a thorough investigation, the police could find no logical explanation for his untimely demise. The locals, however, knew better. They whispered the tale of Mark's ill-fated drive down Shadowed Highway, warning all who would listen never to stop for the haunted souls that roamed the road at night, lest they too become part of the highway's grim legend. On a fog-drenched night, David found himself navigating the winding, desolate roads of Blackwood County. This remote area was notorious for its eerie tales of supernatural occurrences, and the locals spoke in hushed tones about the haunted woods that bordered the road. David, an adventurous soul, had scoffed at such stories, believing them to be the product of overactive imaginations. Behind the wheel of his old pickup truck, David was determined to prove his fearlessness. The truck's dim headlights cut through the thick mist as he pressed onward, his favorite country tunes playing on the radio. The lonely road stretched out endlessly before him. However, as he ventured deeper into the heart of Blackwood County, an unsettling sensation washed over him. The fog seemed to thicken, enveloping his truck in an impenetrable shroud. David couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, and an eerie silence descended upon the forest that flanked the road. Suddenly, out of the mist, a figure emerged on the roadside, its thumb extended in the universal gesture of a hitchhiker. David, initially hesitant, decided to pull over. He reasoned that helping someone in need was the right thing to do, even in this eerie setting. The hitchhiker, a young woman in a tattered dress, climbed into the truck without a word. Her pale face was obscured by tangled hair, and she clutched a worn leather bag tightly to her chest. David, feeling a sense of duty, asked, Where are you headed? Without looking at him, 
the woman whispered, Home. David eased back onto the road, trying to make conversation. I've never seen anyone out here at this hour. Do you live nearby? The woman remained silent, her gaze fixed on the misty darkness outside the window. As they continued down the road, David couldn't shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong. A sudden chill filled the truck's cab, and David's heart raced as he glanced in the rearview mirror. In the back seat, where there had been only empty air moments ago, now sat another figure, a spectral, shadowy presence that seemed to be composed of pure darkness. Panicking, David swerved the truck to a screeching halt. The hitchhiker beside him turned, revealing a face twisted with malevolence. She hissed, You should have kept driving, before he could react. The ghostly figure in the back seat lunged forward, and icy fingers clamped around David's throat. His vision blurred as his breath was stolen from him, and he realized that the hitchhiker he had picked up was no ordinary traveler. The next morning, David's abandoned truck was discovered on the side of the road, the engine still running. His lifeless body was slumped behind the wheel, the unmistakable marks of supernatural strangulation etched into his skin. The legends of Blackwood County gained another tale that night, a chilling reminder to all who dared to traverse its haunted roads after dark. It was a stormy night when Sarah and her friends set out on an impromptu road trip through the heartland. The rain pounded on the windshield and lightning streaked across the dark sky. They were adventurous spirits, undeterred by the ominous weather and the plan was to explore winding country roads, chasing the thrill of the unknown. Their GPS led them onto a remote highway, one that didn't appear on any map. The road was narrow and lined with dense woods that seemed to close in on them. It was almost as if the forest itself was trying to keep them away. Sarah's friends joked about it being the Phantom Road. As they drove deeper into the night, the rain showed no signs of letting up, and visibility dwindled to near zero. They were in the middle of nowhere, with no cell service and no choice but to continue down the unfamiliar road. Then they saw her, a woman standing alone on the roadside, drenched and disheveled. Sarah's compassionate nature led her to slow down, despite the unease that had settled in her stomach. With trembling hands, the woman signaled for them to stop, and Sarah rolled down her window. The stranger's voice trembled as she explained that her car had broken down and she needed a ride to the nearest town. Despite her friend's protests, Sarah agreed to help. The woman climbed into the back seat and they continued their journey into the storm. The stranger sat in silence, her presence casting an eerie pall over the car. As they traveled down the phantom road, the weather grew worse and the landscape seemed to warp and change. Sarah checked the GPS, but it showed no signs of a town or civilization nearby. Panic began to set in. Turning to their passenger for guidance, Sarah asked, Are you sure you know where we're going? The stranger turned to face them, her eyes empty and devoid of emotion. In a hauntingly calm voice, she replied, We're going where you can never leave. Suddenly, the car's headlights revealed a twisted, overgrown path branching off from the main road. Before Sarah could react, the stranger's hand shot out, gripping her wrist with an otherworldly strength. The car veered onto the dark path, swallowed by the forest. Hours later, search parties scoured the area, but there was no sign of Sarah and her friends. The Phantom Road had claimed them, and their fate remained a mystery. Locals whispered tales of the cursed highway, warning travelers never to venture onto its sinister path during a storm, for it was a road that led to nowhere but darkness and despair. <laughs>